Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. I mean, who else would it be? And it's time for a review of the new Cakes the Killer Tape, the eulogy. <laughs> Kicks the Killer is an up-and-coming New York MC, and this is his latest project, The Eulogy. And this project is really the first time I'm hearing of him, however, he is a part of a growing trend in underground hip-hop that you may already be familiar with. When it comes to popular music, hip-hop is one of the younger genres out there, and I feel like right now we're living in a time where we are seeing the, the, the fruits of the genre's maturation, mature maturity, growing maturity. Because as a culture, hip-hop is well into its 30s at this point, we're seeing a much more diverse and prolific underground, just burgeoning with creativity and open to a load of different musical ideas and, and philosophical ones as well. And lifestyle choices too, because one of the biggest lines crossed in this style of music in the past year has been kind of the acceptance of, of, of homosexuality, of bisexuality, by fans and listeners alike through artists like Frank Ocean, ASAP Rocky, recently Jadakiss. And because of that tolerance, hip hop is now kind of making room for this new lane of homosexual, bisexual, and transgendered MCs who are now making a lot of noise. Like the very flamboyant Leaf, who right now I believe is on his second full-length mixtape, and Mickey Blanco too, who tags this really kind of odd and dark image to his transgendered lifestyle. I, I see these guys are making a name for themselves out there, they're pushing themselves, but the thing is, I'm not really all that enthralled with either of them lyrically at the moment, or even really with their flows, or just the sound of their voices in general which is kind of why I feel relieved to be like, hey, check out Cakes the Killer. This dude's lyrics are loaded with references to his sexual preferences, but it's hardly distracting because he doesn't really shove his image in your face through music videos or just an oversaturation of photographs, maybe not yet anyway. But what really stands out about this guy, something that is gonna catch even traditional hip hop heads ears, is the fact that this dude has a super fast and sweet flow. He's got wordplay, he's clever, he's got personality, he's hilarious as well, and I feel like his words come out so clear because of the sort of flamboyant twang he has in his voice and how high-pitched his voice comes off when he's rapping. And though there's a lot of homosexual imagery in his music, which I'm sure people, you know, associate with being effeminate and yada yada yada, he's not afraid to get aggressive either. There are actually times when I feel like his flow, just the sound of his voice, sort of reminds me of like Lash Gambino, but without all of the emotional baggage completely lacking in self-awareness that gives me a migraine. Not only are this dude's lines sticking in the back of my head because they're well delivered vocally, but they're just clever and they present his I guess sexuality in this way that is both at the same time hypersexual and badass. Like spit that shit to turn a homophobe into a hypocrite. In my DMs trying to rendezvous, trying to find out if what you heard about cakes is true. You've kind of got this traditional 90s New York just aggressive, in your face, insulting attitude with a lot of cartoony violence matched up against all of this homosexual imagery of charging a dude double because he thinks he's gonna get sex for free. Or or getting finger banged, or wanting to sleep with somebody else's boyfriend. As if this dude was not flamboyant and in your face enough, he rides these intensely busy instrumentals which all together have this very, I guess, sort of uh, cohesive, consistent quality about them that is just so dense with rattling, fast, rhythmic sounds. I mean, a lot of these beats fall under the category of juke as well as footwork stuff, so you're getting just these just busy, busy snares, rims, hi-hats, there's a bit of trap as well. Instrumentally, this is definitely not a tape just any mere amateur could hop on and just start rapping over. The track Keep It Coochie, one of my favorite tracks on here, has an awesome footwork rhythm to it. It's got a bit of a jazz sample, sampling what feels like to be a much older piece of of jazz, like maybe a piece of big band that could have come off a of 78. It's got snappy hi-hats, jittery clicks. Again, it's just heavy, it's dense, it's thick. The song Break Em Off is a bit of more footwork with choppy, choppy 
choppy snare drums and just bass hits that rattle, rumble, just shake the earth. The Good Book has these weird vocal samples and there is this awesomely hilarious Frank Ocean reference toward the back of the song. But what I think may annoy some people on this track is there's some really weird chorus vocal effects on this track that feel like, I don't know, kind of dissonant, chipmunked a bit. These same effects are very, very in your face on the track Fuck Your Boyfriend, which I, this to me was maybe the least likable track on the album just because of these vocal effects, like how in your face they are, just how kind of obnoxious they are. There are other very animated battle cries that, that kind of get the same repetitious treatment to them, like Kitty is the wet dance! Kitty is the wet dance! Kitty, kitty, kitty! Like I said, a lot of weird stuff going on with just how intense these beats are, all the vocal effects. It's just a lot to take in. It's it's very just in your face. However, Cakes kind of finds himself very comfortable as well on the closing track on here, which is a bit of very clear, straightforward, and catchy boom bap. It's a bit of a break at the end, but still, I was actually really impressed with this dude's lyrical abilities, especially his flow and personality, and the fact that he has done so well in this very short process project, choosing some beats that match his personality in, in such a great way, to the point where he really, really builds a strong, potent flavor and kind of unique flavor for himself. The Eulogy is an extremely energetic tape. It's a catchy tape. It's a bit one-dimensional because I feel like Keiki comes through with, I guess, sort of a battle anthem on this tape. You're not really getting a lot of slower personal moments or anything like that. For the most part, you're, you're just getting Again, this battle cry, this kind of signal, this alarm, I'm here, take a listen. It just kind of hits you hard and just runs right out. I'm feeling a light to decent eight on this thing. If you've given it a listen, what did you think? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? And what do you think I should review next? Anthony Fantano, Cakes the Killer, forever.